So Earth, the only thing is, Earth is, if you're looking at an astrology chart, it's just like looking at the AE map with uh, the little things I used to doodle. Remember the charts I used to doodle over the AE map? Right. When I would do the symbols? That's what you're looking at. You're looking at, you're on Earth and those luminaries are above you. So that's kind of what you're looking at when you look at a chart. You're just looking at the AE map. It's set for latitude and longitude, and those are the luminaries that were in the sky from the east to the west. And then the ones on the so bottom of your chart. Obvious that the in. geocentric yeah. flat yeah. Earth with the wandering stars is what astrology is all about. And so, yes. how do how do these heliocentric astrologers think like Earth is the third planet? So, so in their aspects and everything, you go from Mercury to Venus, and then don't worry about Earth. That's just where we live. You yep. know, it has nothing it has nothing to do with anything. But, and then V, and then Mars, and the, like what? How no, the they actually one, have. Yeah, they oh, have they a have heliocentric astrology. Yeah, they have heliocentric astrology. And if you go on astro.com, you can pick heliocentric astrology. No one ever uses heliocentric <laughs> astrology. It's literally a joke like no one ever uses that because it doesn't tell you anything about yourself it doesn't and you know people don't want people want to know about themselves that's what astrology is for to know about themselves to know about other people that's basically what everyone's using it for so these heliocentric astrologers they'll they sit back like you know in their robes with their cigars and they're oh on the stock market i'm using this today earth babbity bob with the saturn and uh, uh and my helios when when will the other geocentric astrologers wake up but there's just this tiny little handful of people that do that and the reason it doesn't catch on is obviously no one cares about that just pseudo intellectual bullshit where you're sitting there no one uses heliocentric astrology it doesn't tell you anything about yourself what you like everything's different the moon's not in the right sign there is no ascendant because the ascendant is where the sun appears to ascend in a chart so that's what they're drawing it for on that chart when you're looking at it the ascendant so for you the ascendant when you came to earth was in late late gemini right yeah late gemini so that's the sign that was on the east when you came out that's what it represents the actual observable sky <laughs> Mm -hmm. It fits with flat Earth perfectly. That's mm, the beauty right, of right. it. And so, the AE so they map. So just take that out in heliocentric astrology because it doesn't fit <laughs> with they just, their cosmology. Yeah, no, yeah. Every one of those guys and women are using geocentric astrology. And then mm. in their readings, they will throw in um, ridiculous NASA stuff, you know. Oh, Uranus spins sideways. <laughs> So that's why it's the planet of in of uniqueness because out of all the planets, Uranus is the only one. And you know, uh, just whatever, just that all day, all day, all day. So that's what I started doing too in astrology right away when I realized the Earth was flat and I was doing stationary Earth astrology, which is the only thing that's going to fit, you know, and it's the only thing that does fit. So that was another ding ding mm -hmm. for me. So then I started telling all the professional astrologers which I did know quite a few because I was astrology dedicated. So all over Facebook, you know, immediately I was there. Eric Dubé, Eric Dubé. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen this? Eric Dubé, you have to see this. And, the, and because I picked up on it so fast and I was so dedicated when I heard Flat Earth and I actually listened when I... I when I'm when I get in that mood, there's just no stopping me. So I know I hear some people talk about it took me a few years or whatever. Not me. I just mm -hmm. immediately funneled straight into it. And then I realized I'm an, I'm a flat earth astrologer. Mm -hmm. So I was, and I was, so I was right there with you. I'm like, Eric, yes, this, we got this. You know, I'm going to, everyone is going to know that flat earth astrology is the way. And so I started telling all these professional astrologers and none of them still to this day, like I sometimes go back and just test it out. I go, I'll go to their chat. <laughs> and say something witty and then the comments are go crazy oh no the flat earthers are here uh. <laughs> i'm just like yeah whatever <laughs> uh, one day one day <laughs> yeah it's a slow go for the astrology thing but there are handfuls of them now and sometimes i go to the astrology chats with robert uh phoenix and david leo king just really big, big names where they have, you know, hundreds of people in the chat. Mm. 
and then I'll just leave my flat earth comments, you know, kind of like, what do you guys think about flat earth? Isn't this geocentric astrology? Let's see what happens. And once in a while, some like somebody just the other day said, uh, put a bullseye, tagged me and said, yes, Mary, bullseye. Mm. I was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> One out of 300, yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, slowly but surely. Yeah, yeah when you get pe when you get people's sense of humor and you kind of get you know their whole vibe, I love that. I yeah. love it. I feel like I'm in a secret land of you know this invisible realm that nobody sees with my astrology all the time. Right. So I know I babble on about that's like all I talk about. I'm obsessed. I'm dedicated. I know. But yeah, it's it's fun. <laughs> I see everything differently. It's like knowing sure. a whole other language that only a few people still speak, like an ancient dialect. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It, it develops that way too. You have to slowly learn astrology over time by communicating with other people, by learning their chart and seeing how they act in the world and then watching it play out. You can't, it's not something you can just learn from a book all at once because it's you have to see it in the people that you know and you have to experience it in real time otherwise it's just intellectual activity there's no because yeah. because that's the main uh thing that people say with astrology is that it's you know it's like bullshit or whatever and there's no way there's no way to prove that it's not bullshit well yeah. the, the way to prove that it's not bullshit <laughs> is that you <laughs> You study it intellectually so you know what they're saying. Then you use it in your life on the people you know to see if what they say works on these people. And if you find over and over and over again that it does, then that's called science. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but most exactly. people don't want to um, admit that the scientific method can be and is used um for astrology you know it's I'm just so people, glad you don't, say that. Like, people don't want to do it say that so good <laughs> virgo <laughs> said it haha <laughs> it's pisces it's virgo <laughs> no it's true that's what i did that seems to be the barrier that astrology is at right now is that the the intellectual people refuse to acknowledge it as a thing because and, and so they won't find out that it is a thing similar to flat earth or something if you just if you just say upright no flat earth is ridiculous there's no way you'll ever find out that flat earth is real if you just say astrology is ridiculous because you know that's what i heard and the horoscopes read that way then that's where the end of your education will be so you can you can then use that basics and look at a chart and start telling people about the things in the chart and they're going to be how did you know that what you know that's exactly me how did you even know and and so you can still do it that way where it's just the logical like you have the formulas and you know the data but you haven't experienced that a hundred times yet you know you don't you don't but then that starts to gain on you eventually and you just it's you can't go back like there's just no going back so many people have tried to convince me that astrology isn't real and it's it's the impossible mission because yeah i just sit back and sort of giggle <laughs> but, but it's just like you're just naturally good at uh communicating you're naturally good at writing you're naturally good at psychology philosophy all of the things that you've talked about so far that's all in your chart that's all astrology is. It's really, you can do it backwards by just watching people and going, oh, look at his Virgo. I, hey, I looked at the Eifers thread the other day and somebody said that. I don't know if they cheated, but they said that in the comments like a year ago. I haven't typed there in so long, but someone said, Eric seems like Virgo with Libra or Scorpio or something. I don't know if they cheated, but I was like, doesn't he though? You know, I didn't, I didn't say anything, but it's so obvious. It's just so obvious, especially for me because it's my exact opposite. I keep telling you that, like mm. I'm Pisces Sun opposite to Virgo Sun, and then I'm Scorpio Moon opposite to Taurus Moon. Oh wow! 
So I'm actually your opposite sun and your opposite moon. moon. A double mm. dose of polarizing. <laughs> so it's super easy for me to notice Virgos. I'm always noticing them in chats, even in chats, people will be typing and I see it just comes to me. And that's what I wanted to say too. When I was 16 and I had the acid trip and then I f sat down and read Linda Goodman's Love Signs front to back. Oh. <laughs> I was already an observant person who asked everyone's birthday. And so I immediately could play every sign that I read. I was like, oh, that's this person, this person, this person, this person. And then the next sign, oh, that's all these people. So it was just coming to me, you know, and it was just these, and I'm like, holy f astrology is real. And, you know, we can actually immediately it came to me. That means we have the power to make people like have our babies a certain way. Mm. So for you, for example, you have Mars and Scorpio at home. So it's in a Mars ruled sign. So sometimes you might seem like a Scorpio just because you have this intense, passionate Scorpio, Marsy, where Aries is the outer expression of Mars, Scorpio is the inner. So you have that sort of, like you said, people will be like, why are you so calm? And you're like, what are you talking about? You're like, just what are you burning right now. It's that, it's this inner, it's the yin, it's the water yin Mars. And then Aries is the outer fire one. So what I have is it's exactly moon Scorpio, exactly in conjunct Venus Aries. So there, so I have the yin Mars and then the yang Mars exactly in a hard aspect together. So that when, when you do a chart, if you look at somebody's strongest aspect that's what's playing out all day your your strongest one is moon taurus exactly in conjunct venus libra and those are both venus ruled signs about beauty and communication skills and diplomatic communication skills and so so where taurus is the physical body the physical plane part of venus um, Libra is the, the mind and the love of intellectual anything. So together, they, they're they called an in conjunct and they don't really get along. One's in air and one's in earth. So they're always sort of bugging each other where the physical, so you'll see those kind of people like you being in uh, physical things like dance or theater or something, but also um, in the intellect somehow. So maybe writing books about that, writing books about mental health or like just sort of philosophy or just creative Venusy things. So think Venus and you have both of these Venus signs, but they're kind of fighting, but they're, they're not, you know, they get each other, but they don't. And they just cause a lot of action. So out of you, out of anyone that had that aspect, I would say they would be, they could be an author, like creative writing, a teacher of something to do with the mind, you know, just really making you question your mind because that's always going on for you. So that's your strongest angle. So every single day, your strongest aspect is every day. You wake up with that shit every single day. It's just your, when you came out of your mom, that shit was in the sky for you. And that is, you're going to carry that forever.